Hello, my name is Adrian Hill, and today I'm very proud to present Ditherpunk to you, which has been my hobby and passion project for the past year. So what is dithering? Wikipedia tells us dithering is an intentionally applied form of noise used to randomize quantization error. In more simple terms, it's an image quantization technique used to represent images in much smaller color palettes. And typically it's very visually pleasing. As an example, let's try to display this lighthouse using only black and white as color. So a very naive approach would be to round up and down each pixel in this grayscale image. But if we run this code, we see that we lose a lot of information from the original image. And we can play around with this threshold parameter, but still the results don't look great. If we run dithering, however, we can see that the shade of the sky gets approximated by noise. And this is the case for most dithering algorithms. Similar ideas can be found um, in stippling, which is an ancient engraving technique where craftsmen used to engrave wood with very small dots to approximate shading. Also in the printing industry, half toning was used to approximate grayscale color with black ink. And several dithering algorithms still exist that simulate these half tones. Dithering was also used a lot in old video games that had to work around limited color palettes. For example, this screenshot of The Secret of Monkey Island only uses 16 colors, but manages to have sophisticated shading due to dithering. Dithering is also used in new video games and print media as a stylistic choice. For example, here in The Return of Obra Dinn, which is actually what inspired this package. Ditherpunk.jl um, implements 30 dithering algorithms, um, most of which currently are error diffusion, ordered dithering, and half-toning algorithms. And the default algorithm um, is Floyd Steinberg. So let's go over to a demonstration. As I've shown you in the beginning, all dithering algorithms can be applied to grayscale images. And it's fun to play around with different methods and see the characteristic patterns that emerge. And all algorithms can also be used to modify images in place. Um, dithering can also be applied to color images and will automatically apply channel-wise dithering. And once again, this works in combination with any of the 30 algorithms. We can also dither in color by passing a color scheme, which I've defined here. And if we apply this, we can see that the output only uses these five colors that I've defined here. And using Pluto's color picker, we can play around with these colors and see how they affect the output. I also recommend playing around with the color schemes from colorschemes.jl. Um, for example, since today is the 4th of July, we might want to dither in the colors of the US flag or see which color palettes lead to very trippy outputs. Um, if we don't have a specific color scheme in mind, the punk can also automatically um, generate color schemes um, based on the image that you pass to it. So, of course, if we increase the number of colors, um, we will be much closer to the original image. Um, it is also possible to dither to, to bry symbols by using the function bry, um, which can also be called with any of the 30 algorithms. Let's move over to some creative applications. So the first fun application is ASCII dithering. And this is possible due to the fact that all color dithering methods return an indirect array. So what we can do here is define a grayscale color scheme and an ASCII ramp this color scheme maps onto. And when loading an image, we need to compensate for the aspect ratio of the ASCII characters. And once this image is loaded, we can dither it. And since the output is an indirect array, we can access the indices 
in the color scheme. And we can now use these indices to um, index onto our ASCII RAM. And if we print every line in this, we get this beautiful ASCII output, which I think looks even cooler due to Pluto's terminal simulation. The second application I want to show you is what I call SDF halftoning. So here we've defined an SDF assigned distance function that uh, resembles a star, as you can see in this contour plot. And we can now evaluate this SDF on a grid to compute a threshold matrix and create an ordered thither algorithm from this. And I've defined here this algorithm star dither, which takes a star size. And this algorithm can now directly be used to dither our image. And using Pluto UI, we can now play around with the size of the stars. And we can always see the lighthouse. So before I end this talk, I want to give some advice for future package creators. And what this slide boils down to is that I think that Julia is a great choice for um, creative coding packages. Um, I was able to build the package on top of the Julia images and Julia graphics ecosystems, um, which made it very easy to implement algorithms. For example, I was able to use um, measures for perceptual differences from colors JL and mathematical operations on color types from color vector space. Um, test images and reference tests.jl were very important to quickly add reference tests to my package. And all in all, it was a very good experience. If you want to contribute, um, you're very welcome to do so. The package is almost fully reference tested and almost fully benchmarked. So if you're the type of person that likes to find performance increases in packages, you're very welcome to look through our code. Um, and if you make a PR, you can tag it with run benchmark to run the package benchmarks in CI. I want to give special thanks to Johnny Chen, who's been a great um, mentor um, when it comes to Julia and the Julia images ecosystem, as well as good practices for package development, as well as Theo Gali Fajou, who's endured uh, me talking about dithering for way too many lunch breaks. Thank you for your attention.